The x value is the distance from the y axis. The y value is the distance from the x axis. Positive values uh, give us a sense of positive negative values give us a sense of direction. All right. So if you're talking about a distance from the y axis, that's going to be a horizontal distance. All right. Horizontal distance. All right. Positive is to the right. Negative is to the left. All right, just like a number line. All right, so if I were to actually just plot this x value, just this x value, I would be plotting anything along this vertical line here. All right. This is x equals negative 2. All right. Anything along that vertical line would satisfy the requirement that x has to be equal to negative 2. All right. Now, the y value gives us the distance, and it actually sort of helps us triangulate the location of the coordinate. I'm just going to make this different in terms of the color. Uh, I think it's this one. So the distance from the x-axis is a vertical distance. All right. So vertical positive means you're going up. Negative means you're going down. All right. I guess I didn't really need this open paren here. So. If I just plotted this y value of 6, I'm saying anything along the, the line y equals 6, meaning anything that's 6 units above the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So anything along this horizontal line would satisfy the requirement of being y equals 6. All right. So when I say negative 2 comma 6, that notation is telling us something specific. It's giving us the instance where x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to a positive 6. All right, that notation, parentheses, negative 2 comma 6, close parentheses, it's not interval notation, but it does have a meaning. It's talking about these two things happening concurrently, all right? But it is talking about specifically the intersection of two lines, all right? And it's very easy to lose sight of that because in the past you've thought of plotting a point, like for example, four, three, you know, it says label this A. It's like, oh yeah, fun. You know, uh, the B is like, okay, uh, go right four, down three. Uh, I'm sorry, right four, up three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's easy enough to plot a point. You've done that plenty of times. I mean, without all this horizontal vertical line stuff, but to understand what that point represents is, is gonna be more meaningful going forward, all right? Because sometimes the point will be variable, all right? So it'll be a relation itself. So if I tell you instead of negative two, six, if I tell you it's, t squared comma 3t you know like how do you how do you plot that well not without having an understanding of what x is and what y is all right and so that that's really kind of what we're getting at and we'll we'll do an activity in this unit that kind of kind of explores that uh, that concept all right but it, it's just a little bit of the theory behind how coordinates work rather than just the procedure because you know, in, in the past it was procedure. Now you're moving towards the true understanding of what, what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. All right. Along those lines is slope. All right. So just going down the slope. Hey, you could plot the rest of the points because, like, like I said, I mean, you, you've plotted points in the past. That's not, that's not anything new. All right. Same thing with finding slopes. You got a little, uh, little character here skiing down the, uh, the line indicating 
uh, the direction of the slope. In some cases, it's positive slope. In other cases, it's negative slope. And in other cases, zero slope. Uh, or in, in another case, in this situation, it's zero slope. And then you have the undefined slope, which really doesn't represent itself too very, very well graphically. Right? I mean, it's a, it's a funny image, but it really doesn't give us an idea of what's happening gra graphically, the tie-in between that and, a, and a, a zero, um, an undefined slope. But a negative slope, if you read a graph from left to right, uphill is a positive slope. Downhill is negative slope. All right. If, if, if any of you are actually skiers, and you know that like one of the worst things that could happen when you're on a trail, aside from actually, you know, getting injured, would be you're skiing, you're having a good time, and then you hit like this really steep slope and you're like, all right, uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to hit it. And then halfway through, you slow down. And then you get towards the bottom and you're like, you go to a, you know, a snail's crawl and you're like, all right, I made it down to the bottom. And then you make it around the turn and you realize it's all flat. And it's like, oh, well, if I had known that, I would have just hit it hard because then I, I would have just ditched the speed as I, turn, as I made the turn and went flat. I wasn't going to hurt myself. I thought this thing was going to go down forever. You know? So you get the, to the flat terrain and you're like, ah, well, I guess um. I guess I'm walking, you know. I, I use the little ski blades, the snow blades. So I don't have poles. So for me, it's like, um, it's like power skating. I'm just like constantly pushing and it sucks. But the next time you go through, you know, hit that slope hard and you go around the bend and you're good. But if you're gonna categorize the slope of that flat terrain, you're probably gonna say that, that, that it's zero slope. All right. Now, actually, honestly, it's aggravating. You'll probably say that there's no slope, but it really is that there is zero <laughs> slope. Or the slope is equal to zero. All right. The thing is, they use the concept of no slope to represent that the slope is not something that can be computed because it does not exist. All right. That's the case of undefined. All right. That's the case of a vertical. What we say in the case of a vertical is, and we, we, we tend to think about it as a, uh, as a physical thing. If it's vertical, there's, you're not going to have any, any way to create any sort of friction. So I was thinking about the, the physical aspect of it. You're, you're not going to be able to keep any kind of consistent contact with the surface as you're skiing down the slope. You're going you're gonna to float. Gravity is going to take you off of the surface. So the, the slope, quote unquote, slope of the path is irrelevant because you won't be following that anyway. You're going to be floating off of it. All right. So we say undefined or we say that there is no slope to account for that. All right. Mathematically, it doesn't play out anyway because you get a zero in the bottom of a fraction. You get something that's undefined. Whether you put it in Desmos or any other calculator, you get that error message that tells you that something had gone wrong, you know, that that's what happens when you get the zero in the bottom of the fraction. All right. Um, when you want to graph a linear function, uh, you get the whole process here. That's, uh, that's pretty easy to do if you follow the steps, but I'll just show you really quickly. Uh, in this class, we've been very Desmos friendly, as you know. So there, there aren't going to be a whole heck of a lot of times where I'm going to tell you to graph something by hand, you know, maybe just once just to show that you know how to do it. And then we move on from there. Every other time we'll use some technology. But let me just show you the one time and then, you know, just to say that we've done it and then go from there. So if I wanna, let me do B. If I wanna solve this equation for Y in terms of X, first thing I would do is get rid of the three X and subtract that from both sides. So I'd have negative y is equal to, now, a question that might be floating in your mind is why, why solve for y in terms of x? Well, the idea is that we wanna have our equation in the form of y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. 
All right. So I want the structure of it to be y is alone on one side with the x term leading off on the other side and the constant term all by its lonesome on, uh, off at the end. All right. So I could write this as 1 minus 3x. But then in the very next step, I'm going to want to rewrite this so that the 3x and the, and the 1 get swapped. All right. Because I want to have it in this form with the x coming first. All right. So, but that being said, I got to get y alone anyhow. So I can divide both sides by negative one or I can multiply both sides by negative one. Remember, this is not an inequality, so there's nothing funky going on when you multiply by negative one. We'll get to the inequalities down the line. But here I would just straight multiply by negative one and that would give me y equals negative one plus three x but I want to have it in the appropriate form with the X term leading the way. So I would take using the commutative property of addition, these two terms and do a little switcherooski around the plus sign. I over highlighted. So three X plus negative one, same as three X minus one. All right. So in terms of computation, it, it, it seems like there's a lot going on there. It's only because I showed every little teensy tiny step. It really isn't that much. It's, it, there's a lot of this that you do in your head. But graphing this isn't really that bad because we have the slope. We have the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the y value of the location in which the graph crosses the y axis. All right, well, this would be the y value of the location in which the graph crosses the y axis based off of that negative one. The slope is a whole number, whole number, well, any whole number could be represented as a fraction. Since we know slope is rise over run, change of y over change in x, I would want to write any slope as a fraction or at least think of it as a fraction. So three over one, same as three, this is going to tell me, because remember, slope is change in y over change in x. The y values are your up down, the x values are your left right. All right, so this is telling me to go up three, right one. So from this point, I'll go up three units and to the right one slap a ruler on it, call it a day, because honestly, when you're graphing a line, all you need are two points and a ruler. If you want to do it freehand, maybe throw in a few more uh, steps along the way, go up three over one a couple more times. You could also go the opposite direction because positive three over positive one is the same as negative three over negative one. Simplify to the same thing, right? Two negatives divide out to give you a positive. So that would allow you to go down three, left one from any one point to get to another point along the line. So one, two, three, over to the left one. One, two, three, over to the left one, and so on. Like I said, slap a ruler on it. Draw your nice line. Give it a label, All right? The region's folks like labels. They like taking off points when you don't put a label. I don't know why. If it's the only line on the graph, what else could it be? I, I'm a stickler for labels when, it come, when, when you graph more than one thing on the same set of axes. Like if you were to graph this line also here, for example, then I would want you to label them so that I would know which is which. But if there's only one line on a graph, I, I don't see why you need to label it. But you know, if they, they harp on that sort of thing. So we'll do it. Get in, the, get in that habit, I suppose. Throw some arrows on at the end to indicate that the, the line extends forever. That's important, All right? Although some textbooks you'll see they don't actually do that. And Desmos doesn't do it. Graphing calculators don't do it. But we got to do it, All right? Now, as far as creating the graph is concerned on Desmos, I'll just pull that up real quick. Will I pull it up real quick? Who knows? Come on, there we are. 
3x minus y equals 1. Oh, equals, I said equals. Equals 1. And there you go. Now, you want to get points from this graph on paper so that you could actually plot it. Tap on that little gear. Okay, that didn't work for some reason. I don't know why. All right, well, if that doesn't work, tap on your intercepts, plot those. Some of them are a little funky. Like in this case, my x-intercept is one-third comma zero. I don't want to plot that. So what I'll do is I'll just drag along. I'll just drag along until I see a nice point to plot. All right. So I got zero, negative one, and one, two. I'd plot those, draw a line through it, call it a day. All right. So I think the reason why that it didn't create a table of values is because I didn't put it in y equals form. So let me try that. y equals 3x minus 1. Enter. Yeah, it's got to be in y equals form in order to create a table. But if you hit that little gear icon, if you hit that little gear icon, you'll see a little table shows up. If it's in the appropriate form, then you can grab some points from that. All right. Okay.